and and it's cold outside, so I'm all bundled up. I'm ready to go out into the far country. And you gotta put in this layer and that layer. And no, I'm exaggerating, it's still pretty mild out there, but it's coming for December. We're doing okay. And uh, da da, Niagara Falls. And it's time for the fireworks of Niagara Falls. The climax of the ages is upon us. And it is by God's word opening anew, exactly as Matthew 24 and Daniel 12, 9 has clearly foretold. So welcome and love from love go from hope and peace from peace, mercy from mercy and faith from faith. For our living Lord of the ages is all of those things. And all the water in the world that Niagara Falls keeps going over and over and over and over and over is nothing compared to the great ocean of the Lord's adoration, which he is now pouring out upon all flesh through his foretold messenger. Because he's saying to everyone, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. I'll write my law and my love on your heart. Beyond that, no one will ever need to be taught of me anymore. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For it's true, as little children, when we were alive and loved, uh, Jesus said to be born again, you got to be as a little child with your love moving forward. And even if we're going two steps forward, one step back, we're still going, praise God, in the right direction. So Merry, Merry Christmas, and it's time that we come to the crux of the crucible. It's time that we reach the pinnacle, the highest point of the ages, which all the prophets foretold, the kingdom age revelation of God's unconditional love over one and all of us. And if the people of our beloved love of the ages will sing uh, the most beautiful songs un unto that incomparable Lord of awesomeness, they'll be wasting every breath if they have not love as, as they waste all that life is. So we have to keep our love light alive. Uh, committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is letting God go out in you. Love is the name of the Lord God Almighty. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love, capital L. John, the beloved name, God and Christ, love. And that's who they are. But if you commit the unforgivable sin, let their light go out in you, then there is no redemption for you. So keep your love moving as a child. And if anyone among all those hearing, uh, and I'm speaking to all the wheat and the tares, both of the world, and I hope that the tares will become wheat, but if any of them holds not uh, adoration for all uh, that they love, uh, their voices would only be as a hollow gourd because their words would be as empty as, uh, would be empty as they deceive themselves. Uh, need glasses, I think, here. I'm going to turn up the volume here so I can actually see, increase the, uh, font size without glasses. There I go. Magic. It's just like I just got uh, cataracts <laughs> removed. Uh, my dad was 80 and he got his, his removed and he never had to wear glasses the remainder of his life. Praise God. The medicine these days is amazing. So uh, praise the Lord and it's time that we move forward by a close examination of kingdom age love. If we can conceive it, we can accomplish it. And even though such souls uh, who have the form of godliness but deny the power of love, who is Christ within us, even if they have golden tongues that offer the Lord dedicated worship as they bellow out loud praises unto him, if they're not really sincere in loving the souls that he created in his image around them, then they uh, that they can see how could they ever love a uh, Lord God who they cannot see. It's all about love. And even though someone exalts the Lord into places far above the heavens of heavens, if he holds unforgiveness deep down, he'll soon be finding his sweet words becoming most bitter to the point of becoming even very toxic. Many are going to say, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, your love light went out. I didn't know you. And that's, it's all been about love. It's never been about believing anything. It's always been about love, people. 
Uh, God is not a respecter of man. All of our religion is a vain attempt to make God like us more than them. And it's all a bunch of hogwash because God is a sin if God was to have favoritism. End of story right there. But people have wrongly leaned onto their own understandings. So let the lives of all Muslims, Christians, and Jews, and Gentiles, and believers, and unbelievers all stand together and um, let them now become divine evidence of their love for God uh, within their lives. Let the, your lives reflect his love within you. And let such beloved souls of that Lord of goodness now come forth into his brightest light as they show their love of man's unity to all men. This is what Christ was talking about in John 10 when he predicted that he would arise as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man because the kingdom age covenant of Jeremiah 31 that he would tear down all kingdoms of mankind's imaginations not built on his unconditional love uh, as Jeremiah 110 Haggai 2 2 uh, it's because he is the carpenter of the ages and the tongue of his mouth the rod thereof is the hammer of God and he tears down first before he builds and all so shall it be and for the Lord God has nothing for adoration for those who dearly love him as they let their love flow like when they were little children um, people full of love embrace his holy ways so let all children of Abraham uh, stand together and let them all come united to realize that the perfection of love in the face of animosity even is a sacrifice unto the living Lord God of love that he continually calls for because love is forgiveness forgiveness is love 70 times 70 times 70 times 70 times 70 times 70 must we forgive them uh, those who uh, uh, would slant us and after all godly loves causes all those who are humbled by it to really care about people that they don't even like uh, even my own members of all of my family there's times I didn't like them but I've always loved them love transcends and that is what we must have we must beat the sword into the sickle of Amos 9 for the Lord Christ is revealing himself as the sower of the seed who has overtaken his own reaper and so praise the Lord that love causes all those humble to to move uh, forward and if any one of the uh, house of Muhammad passes by a hungry man or the house of Christianity or the house of Judaism and if they feed him not their love is only like a creaking door and their happy songs are only just real sad melodies that don't really hit the right notes uh, listen a couple times to man in the mirror by uh, Michael Jackson uh, that was poetry in, in motion and we must examine ourselves that is the greatest jihad for the house of uh, Muhammad uh, that we have is to fighting the evil within us as Muhammad clearly said and if any one of the lineage of Ishmael curses those who hates them or if those of Christianity or those of Judaism if any of those of the Abrahamic uh, faiths uh, do that their charity if they hate their charity is bankrupt and their off-based love is actually void of all worthwhile virtue since unto the Lord God alone their harmonious praise sounds only like some irritating scratches being made on a uh, chalkboard if they have uh, selfish love and even though uh, a well-meaning person might do many acts of charity if they're only done to put themselves under a spotlight to gain the attention of others their so-called love is selfish and of no real value unto the Lord other than the charity for others which is always good and the Lord God he knows if a heart's intentions are honorable or not and he knows even though that one might memorize every verse in the Bible or every surah in the Quran or every word in the, the Book of Mormon it doesn't matter and even though they might memorize uh, every line in all of those books if they have not love in their religion their religion is as useful as an atheist view of the nothingness that's ahead 
of them once they perish if they let their love light go out. There are Christians that the Lord are going to say, I don't know you because they're loveless Christians. They have a form of godliness to deny the power thereof. They stand in the land of the walking dead uh, with their lo love dead as a noun, not moving forward. You must be born again. You must be as a little child's love. Uh, a little child shall lead them uh, into the kingdom age. The faith and love in motion of a child shall lead us all. So praise the Lord that... Uh, to be born again by love, our love has to be alive. And know that now is the hour of the Lord God's empowerment as he presently sends forth his most exciting divine message uh, foretold in Malachi 3, 1, the message that would prepare his way from one from the north of, in Canada. Uh, and I, uh, Isaiah 41, predicted that the rest of the world will come to realize that I'm right. This, because this has been taught since the beginning. I am one who's either dull and red or blind, Genesis 49, 12, and I hold the scepter of all authority as it is written there, foretold for it. Uh, he who would cause the glory of God to cover the earth as waters cover the sea, as grass cover the lands, as uh, lilies cover the ponds, and as sands even cover the most desolate of deserts. For these are the days of the, the, the exaltation of our living Lord God, who is one, one God, one man, one love, one faith, one, one understanding of our blessedness, one realization that we are angels in the flesh, or we can be demons in the flesh. It's our choice. But if we point to love, love is all we need. And uh, so praise the Lord that the vision of God has come. Though it tarried, even though people waited for it, it finally has come. It has not lied. You can behold me whose soul is not upright. And even though I've been transgressed by wine, the just shall live by my faith. Yea, I am the strong and mighty one of uh, the line by line, precept by precept, the writer foretold as Elijah, uh, not of Revelation 11, but of Zechariah 5, the writer foretold the end time re revelator of the flying scroll of the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14, of uh, Moses' prophecy that one like him, a kingdom age covenant giver and a writer would come forth and that only death would be uh, ahead if people will not hear this voice crying out in the wilderness of ignorance for there is no darkness but ignorance alone this world is badly bent and the lord will tear down now all religion the prophetess baba vanga she said that all religion on planet earth shall collapse and what will take its place is a brotherhood of love arising and she said it will be like uh, all over the lands like white lilies covering all the field of love and peace that are taking the place of tainted off-color uh, racist uh, religion. Most religion is racist, uh, and we teach racism to our children, and we wonder why they become bigots. Uh, well, <laughs> it's time for the faith of love, because every knee shall bow at the name of love, which is Christ, the Lord Jesus, Isa Yeshua who is the carpenter of the ages. And if you stand against this minister, you're spitting in Christ's face of his prophecy of him arising over all the flocks of man, John 10. And you're spitting at his face during his most compassionate prayer for our unity that he knew he would send through his word alive in motion. Paul wrote that when his word comes, Hebrew 8, all faith would be obsolete. Mohammed said that once... Uh, a book comes proving God's mercy that clears up all distortionality that his people would belong to another that sounds like Islam and there would nothing be nothing left of the Quran but its outward form. This is Chrislam. Chrislam is just the name that Israel has been given, foretold in Isaiah 62 too, uh, that they have now inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3, because the covenant of God I will be your God, you will be my people, was always clearly written to all mankind. It says so, Jeremiah 32, 27. I'm the Lord God of all mankind. And by the way, people, it's time to realize that there's only one place in the Word of God that says this, and this shall be considered in the latter days. And this shall be considered in the latter days. What shall be considered in the latter days? This, Jeremiah 30, 24. Look it up, it says so. This shall be considered in the latter days. 
For the Lord God, again, his word is open anew. He's come on the cloud of Matthew 24, the great white cloud of Revelation 14. He has sent forth his everlasting gospel in the world with his everlasting covenant to change the world and reap it for the harvest of love. And as it comes forth, the passion of love is alive. And all, as all of the Lord's names are meditated upon in devotion, for he is the lily of the valley, he is the rose of Sharon, he is the roaring lion of Zion who is roaring louder than ever before. Our time has come for a great deluge that will make Niagara Falls look so puny because it's going to be the ocean of his adoration being poured out upon all flesh. For the revelator, the writer that was foretold to come and restore all things, Matthew 17, 11, has come. And uh, I've, it makes me laugh. I've heard sermons, there will never be any more revelation upon planet Earth. How in the heck are you going to restore all things unless you have revelation of revelation, people? The Lord God has given me open-eyed visions. I've written by a light that was never plugged in for seven minutes. I've had dreams. I've had uh, a prophet told me when I was 30 years old, this is you in Isaiah 49. You are the one that's destined to do everything in vain. Isaiah 49, 4. Lord servant. I am a slave. That's why in only a little over a year, maybe a year and four months, I've got 3,000, almost 4,000 videos so far. And I've just started. <laughs> I'm building the Latter-day Mountain of Isaiah 2, Micah 4, Isaiah 25, from which all people of the earth shall receive uh, forgiveness from the Lord and have all their shame and guilt removed from them. So praise the Lord. It's time for people to be humbled. And by the way, Muhammad knew that uh, there was no important prophet ahead. That's why he, he, he said there will never be another important prophet. The only important prophet was Jeremiah for the kingdom age because he was appointed in Jeremiah 110 to tear everything down for our carpenter of the ages through his messenger of Malachi. 3 1 with his message, Christ's message. He is the writer. I, he is the sender. I am the messenger of it that was foretold. The messenger unto uh, Israel who is ignored by them according to that scripture. But praise the Lord. Uh, things are going to do a turnabout. Uh, unlike Samson pushing on the pillars, one of these days it's all going to fall down. And uh, so praise God for. Uh, the truth of love, that love is not even love until it's given away, and that love is all merciful. So know that the, the gospel of the dove's love shall bring forth the Lord's love unto all nations, and then shall every faithful eye shed many tears of grateful joy, that he alone shall always be their most high, who deeply loves all of those of uh, the house of Muhammad and the house of Christianity and the house of Judaism, the house of all faiths, the house of people of no faith at all. So let even those keep your love alive, for it's time for the order of the nail and the order of the hammer. For Christ Jesus, he is the carpenter of the ages, and he's swinging his sickle, and everyone will get cut down by that one. It's sharper than any razor blade ever was. Love from love.